Hatching commences in 15 seconds. Too late for abortions now. Not without the heart of the operation. No! Well, aren't you charming? Hello, we're the gear to you, and welcome to the finale of Tomb Raider. In the previous episode, we climbed through the horribleness of Atlantis. My goodness, I hope I never have to play that stupid level ever again. But in today's video, it's time for the final encounter. This is the big reason why I suggested you save your Uzi shots until later. Because this thing has the highest amount of HP out of anything in the Tomb Raider in this game. Might not be the highest in any Tomb Raider game ever, but it certainly does for this game. It takes 400 rounds of Uzi clips to be able to defeat this thing. I think it takes 40 shotgun shells or something like that, something along those lines, if you have that as well. So we might try that in a bit, but this is the big reason why I suggested you save your Uzi clips. So, you may be wondering, what the hell is this thing? What exactly is this thing supposed to be? Because everything else at least looks like some kind of real-world thingy, because we've had T-Rexes and Centaurs and Lions and stuff. What exactly is this thing supposed to be? Well, I have a couple of theories, but first let's go over what it's called. And that, on its own, is a bit of an interesting story. So, this thing doesn't exactly have an official name, and it seems like whenever it does, it always changes. So, it's referred to as the Giant Atlantean in some sources for this game. It's also referred to as the Legolas Monster, Torso Boss, the Abomination. Some people in the core design people called it the Aborson. And probably my favorite name that I've ever seen for this guy. In the Japanese guidebook, this thing is just called Adam. <laughs> you have so many other names, but Adam? Okay! And Adam will be missed, how sad. This is one of my favorite bosses in the entire Tomb Raider series. Anniversary does it pretty well too. I think it's done just a little bit better in this one, and I'm just saying that purely for nostalgia bias, because it is technically a cooler fight in Anniversary. I just think it also goes by a little too quickly in that game. So, yeah. Now that we've defeated Adam, let's move onwards. After we get all the Uzi clips and stuff, because it's gonna bother me if we don't get all these right now. Alrighty then. So... Yeah, looks like now our new objective is to get back up to the platform and figure out a way to destroy this Keon, because it seems like Nadla doesn't exactly have the best intentions in the world when it comes to what she plans to do with the thing, so looks like we have to figure out a way to get her to stop being an evil jerk. So what you want to do? You want to go over this way, or not, uh, which way is it? Ah, I remember what we want to do. <laughs> Okay, I didn't practice at all for this, just being completely honest about that. I did not practice at all for this level, because I was getting so annoyed about playing through the Adonis area that I just kind of didn't play any further than that. But it doesn't matter, because now we're playing through this area. And I gotta say, this may very well be one of my favorite final levels in the Tomb Raider series. It's just so cool, because this is what the previous level wants to be. It's a test for all your skills. It has some pretty devious traps. It opens up with a frickin' epic boss fight. It's just so awesome on every level. This level is gonna be a good time. But of course, now that I say that, we're gonna find something that's gonna make this take an eternity to complete. So just the fact that we're running around in circular loops. Yay, we found a safe crystal! Ah, uh, great. We one of those things. Okay. And let's go, 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 go! That was a bad time! Thank goodness we have that safe crystal. <laughs> Remember when I said earlier that 
I hate the fact that the first time we see the Chompers, we're going for 100% completion. That the first time we see them, they have two of them with a breakable tile between them. Yeah, we don't really see that again until towards the very end when it's actually required. I'm not too fond of that, honestly. We did it! Yay! And now moving onwards, next thing we want to do is head over down this way, because, oh boy, look at this! It's a block! Ooh. We're gonna continue, we're gonna continue this positive attitude of tortoises' blocks that certainly don't annoy me with how slow it is to move them. Uh, those blocks, they, they, they're definitely, they're definitely an interesting part of the game, and very notable to the series. It's, it, it's a crucial aspect of the Tomb Raider series that you include these blocks. Without these blocks, is it even really Tomb Raider at that point? Because without them, this might as well be Pac-Man. Because that's exactly the same, right? I remember Pac-Man going across tombs, fighting mummies, fighting a T-Rex. <laughs> Actually, Pac-Man fighting a T-Rex would be funny. <laughs> that would be really funny. I guess the closest we'll get to ever get to that might be like, I don't know, like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, having Pac-Man fight Ridley or something like that. I guess Yoshi could also be a dinosaur. But anyway, now we go over this way. We can see that there's a drawbridge over there, and it's kind of busy being non-activated, which is a little bit on the inconvenient side, but also it doesn't really matter that much because it's not really the way we need to go to anyway. So we continue over here, and oh no, lava sprouts are not very nice. Not very nice. That was a great accent right there, Lady Gerdew. Lady Gerdew is talking about himself into a person. So we continue on over here, and oh, now the drawbridge has been activated. Could have been a little bit nicer and, you know, activated it just a little bit sooner, but no. He decided to wait until after the fact, and went to walk all the way over there. And also, you're on a timer, but it's not a very, it's not a very short timer, so it's not really that big of a deal. But just keep in mind that it will deactivate in a moment. So, yeah, grab the rewards, grab the secrets, and move on with your life. Alright, so it isn't entirely clear what the switch does, but basically what it does is that it activates the drawbridge and stuff. To get to the position that we want to be at, we're going to want to activate it twice. So once to lower it down, and then once to then reset the timer, and then another time to do that part. But remem remember, the other part of the drawbridge is not going to activate, so don't go rushing in there and thinking that life is going to be all cherries and rainbows and unicorns. Okay, okay. I instinctively held was holding the jump parts in because I thought we were going to be too close to the slope, but thankfully that wasn't the case. Thankfully that was not the case and we will be able to move onwards with our life. Watch out for those lava sprouts because even though we can't directly get set on fire, it's not exactly ideal to get burned in the first place. So we want to go? Yeah, this is where we want to go. Alright then. Ow! Oh, boulder, 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 boulder! That almost gave me a heart attack. So yeah, they're not messing around right now because they have they have a lot of mean tricks they're gonna be doing. That boulder over there is gonna be chasing us as well, but luckily we'll be able to move onwards. Uh, boulder, boulder, hello, boulder. Okay, there we go. It didn't activate, and I was like, wait, boulder? But I'm d d no! Oh, come on! We had to do that stupid jumper room all over again! Alrighty then, take two. I mean, take one. The, that first thing that we saw, that was just, uh, that was just a glitch with the capture card to made it look like it was a failure. So we continue on over here, and we want to watch out for the boulders, because remember, children, Lava-covered boulders always have the right away. Alright, continue over here, let the boulder face us, go over here. You thought you could get me, boulder, that's cute. Okie dokie, going forward, 
I don't remember exactly all the traps that are coming. Like, I have a vague idea. Because, ah, do. I'm very happy that we had enough HP. Okay. I have a vague idea of what's coming up next, but yeah, it's going to be a fun time. Now, before we do anything else, this is very important. This is very, very important. I'm going to fully heal her quick, and then we're going to activate the save crystal, because there's something really amusing that I want to demonstrate. So, this point right here, this is the highest vertical point we can possibly be in the original Tomb Raider. Which means... <laughs> Wait, 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 this is great. This is great. We can see part of the world kind of like despawning and stuff because it's behind the pillar. Okay, well that wasn't exactly what I wanted to demonstrate. What I'd like to demonstrate is this! I know it's horrible, but just the fact that we can make Laura scream three times it's always been a morbid thing that I always thought was funny. <laughs> My sisters and I would always love going to this ball in the game, specifically to make Laura scream three times. I don't know if there's a point in the future game where we can get her to scream more than that, but this is something that I always thought was really amusing. Now, another amusing thing that's possible. It is possible to go on this platform in the previous level, and if you do that, then there is a failsafe, because the doorway over there doesn't actually open until this level. So if that happens, another door is supposed to activate here. I didn't think about that when I was recording the previous level, and there is no way in how I'm going to be replaying that again tonight. Okie dokie, I'm getting a little bit tired of this speech because we've had a couple of field outtakes, but without further ado, after all those shenanigans are done, if we can't have the ski on, no one can. So you're gonna see on screen real quick, but over on the other passageway over there is the tunnel that we would have been able to take had we gone to that platform too soon in the previous level. It's only there as a failsafe, just in case you get down there too soon, but the opening on the platform itself is closed off uh, when you're playing through this level, even though the tunnel is open in this one. It's a little confusing, but yeah, you'll see it on screen what I'm talking about. But the Skion has some pretty amusing oversights in the, this level. So the game object itself for the Skion is registered as an enemy because Laura has to be able to target it to destroy it in this level because it's the only object in the entire game that Laura can destroy. So with that in mind, here's where the funny amusing things come from. Because it's registered as an enemy, it is also it also kind of carries over some of the attributes of enemies in this game, such as the fact that when Laura shoots at the Skion, it's technically when Laura shoots at the bleh. when Laura shoots at the Skion, that's hard for me to say. I have trouble with SHs, especially when there's another word after that that doesn't have an SH. So it's a little hard for me to say. But yeah, the funny thing about that is that when you attack it, technically, if you look closely enough at it, the Skion is technically bleeding. It's kind of a morbid detail, but it's also kind of funny, and. It's also pretty amusing because... Wait, which way do we want to go? Ah, okay, see, there's a there's a thing over there. Ah, uh, this is gonna suck. This is gonna suck. Uh, hopefully this will work. Okay, thankfully, it worked. Whew, okay. Thank goodness I looked at my notes in time because if we went too much further, we won't be able to come back for this one. But yeah, the Skion, you can see a bleeding when you attack it because it technically has all the attributes of a regular enemy in this game. But also... At the end of the level, when it does the uh, level stats uh, at the end of the level, such as the secrets and the kill count, if you only defeat the two bosses in this level and destroy the Skion, the Skion technically counts as a kill. So, that's another amusing oversight with the fact that they didn't want to program an object lore could target, so they just made the Skion itself recognized as an enemy and things like that. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it's still pretty amusing to think about. 
Okay. Uh, what do we want to do now? What do we want to do now? Okay, there's nothing for us to do there. Or if we were dropped down right there, then we would have been dighted. We would have been dighted, and I'd rather not be dighted. Okay. All uh, right, unnecessary big backflip. That was a little too soon. No, it was fine. It was fine. It was fine. I was worried that would be a little too soon, but now it was all right. Because every little thing is going to be all right. I don't think it hasn't happened one time. This was like a year ago or something like that, but uh, one time at Galaxy's Edge, um, we had a guest who was wearing a Bob Marley shirt, and like, um, I gave him a compliment on the shirt, and then my friend who was next to me um, looked at me and smiled and was like, I didn't know you were a Bob Marley fan. And it was like, well, is there anybody out there who's not a Bob Marley fan? Because he's like one of the best singers of all time, so I think it's physically impossible for you not to be a Bob Marley fan. All right. I think I said that to him, I was just thinking that, but it's still pretty amusing to think about. This right here gives me, gives me a headache. This is nerve-wracking in every sense of the word. Okay. We missed the one, one up, <laughs> one up. We missed the health back, back there, but it's okay. Now this we want to be careful with. Because these can be a pain, quite literally, because magma is kind of known for being painful and also hot very hot just like Laura <laughs> ah damn okay I always have trouble with that one because that one is a bit of a weird jump because when you're going through it, you feel intimidated because you see the one boulder, you're trying to get through as quickly as possible, but then the other one comes at you. It's a very clever trick. It's a very clever trick. I, I, normally I wouldn't like something like that because it causes deathly doom and destruction and hurt feelings and stuff, but eh, I'll give that one a pass. I'll give that one a pass. That was a good trick. What's not a good trick, however, is that one, because I'd rather not be skewered. Getting skewered is not good for my posture. That was the most flawless run that I've ever had for that. <laughs> Okay, I'm keeping that in the video, even if this is a failed take right here. I'm keeping that in the video. Because that was epic and awesome. Okay, we're good now. We are good now. We can take our time on this one. We don't actually need to rush this or anything. I think this will be a good enough jump. Alright, yeah, we did it. Alright. That, that wasn't that wasn't too bad. That was pretty epic. That was almost as epic as Mickey. Oh, this room sucks. This area sucks. I do not like it. Okay, this right here, we can get sound fire during this. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a very big fan of getting set on fire. I'm just going to say that right now. That might be an unpopular opinion, but I'd rather not be on fire and stuff like that because i don't know just something about that it just seems like it's a bit more hassle than it's worth i'm very happy that we made it through then <laughs> okay this right here oh boy this area oh boy this area okay is there a please tell me there's a save crystal no save crystal really okay all right. I'm trying to. I, I usually have a trick for this. I'm trying to remember what exactly I do here. Okay, that's two squares away, so we can go like that. All right, we did it. Whoa! Okay. All right.
What? That is the last secret in the entire game. That is the last secret in the entire game, and we have a bit of a fun story with this one now, don't we? Okay. So. It's probably gonna display the fact that we only got two of the three secrets in this level. When we do the level stats at the end. The reason for that is because for some dumb reason, there's a glitch in this game where if you get all of the secrets in the game, the last one doesn't count. So yeah, that's kind of a big reason why back in the old days I never really cared that much to go for 100% completion in this game. Because I was like, well, if the last one doesn't count when you get them all, then why do I care? But yeah, that's something, that's definitely something that's a little bit on the unfortunate side. Put the last secret in hand. It's time for the final conflict. Yep, Natla has wings now. She is a demony demon all along. It was Natla all along. <laughs> Who's been messing with everything? It was Natla all along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's really stupid to laugh at your own jokes, but I was really happy with that one. Okay. So, Natla, she's gonna be flying around like a little demony twerp, and she'll be firing explosives at us. Well, I hate to tell you this, Nadla, but Laura has more closer body than you do! Yay! You're defeated! Yay! We're gonna dance on your corpse! Yeah! Badia! Say do you remember? Badia! Dancing in September! Badia! Oh! Now you're still alive! So I'm gonna see if I can get a good picture of this, but something really funny about this encounter, and I can't believe this is of all places is where this is found at, but Primo Guides is usually not that good of a walkthrough company, but their walkthrough book for Tomb Raider Legend is actually really cool. So the really cool thing, well, Nala, I should say right now, Nala is like completely dead right now. So. The, what I'm trying to say, the Tomb Raider Legend Prima Guide is actually really, really cool because for that one, what they did for that was that they had like a series um, retrospective for the Tomb Raider series up to that point. They went into a bit more vague detail with the later games, but they were really specific about the original. And what I really loved about that one is that there was one moment where it's talking about the final boss in this game. And it says something along the lines of, and just like every other, and just like any other supervillain out there, you had to kill her twice. <laughs> so, I don't know why, but the way they worded it was always really funny to me. Now, something else that's pretty funny. There is a glitch in this area. The exit is right up there, and there happens to be a slope right down there. We never talked about this in this video, I would like to cover this at some point, but... There is a glitch in this game called the slope glitch, and basically what this does is that if you're on a slope to terrain and you do a jump at a specific angle, Laura will clip it to the very top of the cliff, uh, kind of similar to the corner bug, but this affects um, only slope to platforms and things like that. This is greatly used in speedruns, and this is probably one of the more notorious ones because if you do that, you can actually skip through the entire boss fight and not really have to do anything about that. Because you can just go directly to the platform up there. It's pretty amusing. I've never been brave enough to try it though. So at some point I definitely would like to try, but just not right now because we're kind of in the middle of trying to escape with our lives. Hopefully we'll be able to make it out okay. I always get a little bit nervous during this part because this jump right here always freaks me out. Just something by the way the camera is shaking. Just the entire atmosphere of this, of this is really cool. With the camera shaking, everything's about to blow up, we just defeated Natla. It's always such a good feeling. Oh, 
Also, don't worry about a timer, timer or anything like that. Because it seems like in most games like this, uh, when you have an event like this going off, chances are there's probably some kind of timer that goes off, but um, you can actually take as much time as you want during this. But the exit is just up ahead. Secrets two of three. That glitch always hurts to see. I did not mean for that to rhyme. And that was Ada Garrity's Let's Play of Tomb Raider. I love this game. This is just such an important game to my childhood. And, well, that's the end of the credits, so bye, everybody! Yeah, we didn't really get a whole lot of time to really go over our thoughts now, did we? But alright, in all seriousness, I've really enjoyed this Let's Play. There are definitely a few moments here and there that I think could have gone a little bit smoother. San Francis Folly taking longer than expected to record, and realizing that I don't like the Atlantis level at all. That was a fun experience, but other than that, I loved this game. This is such an important game to my childhood. Like, this is the big reason why I always loved the Tomb Raider series. To this day, even if Tomb Raider isn't as a uh, prevalent as some other games that I've grown to love, like Legend of Zelda, Splatoon, and things like that. Tomb Raider is still my favorite gaming series of all time, and I'm very happy that we finally were able to do a Let's Play of the original game. So with all that in mind, we're not quite done yet. I do have plans for one bonus video that's going to kind of be like an overview of everything else we haven't seen in the adventure yet. The big thing is that we haven't seen the tutorial level Croft Manor at all throughout this game, so that's going to be something we'll be demonstrating. There's also a few other things I'd like to talk about too. There's a couple glitches that I wanted to showcase, but I didn't really think about in the time where it would have made sense to show them off. So there's a couple other glitches I'd like to talk about. And I would also like to talk about this game's expansion pack, Tomb Raider Gold. I don't have plans to cover those levels themselves because I don't really have a good reliable way of playing them myself. The expansion pack levels, unfinished business, and whatever the other one was called. So, the the expansion pack levels never have seen a re-release, and I don't really have a computer that has a disk drive, because these were only ever available on PC. They were never released on Steam or anything like that, so... Unless the expansion pack levels get a modern day re-release, I don't see myself ever being able to cover them. So I'm just going to flat out say I don't have plans to cover the expansion pack levels. I will talk about them in the bonus video. I will at least talk about them, but I don't have plans to cover them on a walkthrough. And that's pretty much everything I have to say about Tomb Raider. This is still one of my favorite games of all time. I was already happy with how the Let's Play turned out. And I'm really hoping that we could see more Tomb Raider games on the channel in the near future. And with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to the channel for Let's Plays of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey will be continuing. Hopefully they'll be wrapping up pretty soon. We still have a long way to go for Breath of the Wild, but eventually we'll be able to finish those games at some point.
So thank you guys so much for watching this Let's Play of Tomb Raider. And until next time, Lady Gator to you.